How's it going everybody? Welcome back into another video and today since this is the end of the month we are now into October that means we have to rank all of the new releases that I saw in September. Now September was by far the biggest off month I've had since I really started watching new release a lot of new releases uh, every month uh, due to work and things like that so I didn't see as many new releases as I may have wanted to but I still saw seven. So we're going to talk about seven new releases today that I'm very excited to talk about. We're going to be ranking them from the worst to the best. I want you guys to go down below in the comments and let me know what was your favorite September release uh, that came out this year. There's some pretty good ones on here that I'm very interested to talk about. Now, like my other ranking videos before this, this is basically how it's going to work. I'm going to tell you what the film is and then we are going to get into my short review it's not gonna be very long i'm just gonna kind of tell you why i put it where i did what i like about it what i don't like about it and then we will be on our happy merry way sorry i'm trying to get my mic in a good spot so it's not covering up my entire face but i think without further ado we got seven to talk about today let's get into it coming in at number seven is kate now i have it down on my phone that's why i keep uh keep touching it and and looking at it is because i i have it down on my phone this one's very disappointing for me because I saw the trailer of Mary Kate Winslet. I was very Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Why did I say Mary Kate Winslet? I don't Mary Elizabeth Winstead. I was very excited to see this. I thought it looked like a lot of fun, but unfortunately it's very generic, very formulaic, very predictable. You can see where the inspiration came from in every camera shot. I mean, you really could. It was based and inspired on so many other awesome action movies that it did not feel like its own it did not have its own identity that was the biggest thing i had about it now mary elizabeth winstead is as good as she can be in this film but that really is about as far as it goes the story is very unmotivated the characters are extremely unlikable i had no emotional attachment to this film it wasn't that great i didn't love it i gave it a 70 out of 100 it comes in at number seven on my list coming in at number six is the card counter this one is fascinating to me because i do like the stories around you know poker gambling things like that i i am very always interested by stories like that and the card counting part and aspect of this is actually really well done i really enjoyed that but that's kind of as far as it goes there's two stories here that are kind of converging together one of them is really interesting and thought-provoking the other one is not great i didn't like it i felt like it was too forced i didn't love that they succeeded in one failed in the other should have stick to poker should have stuck to that because i was genuinely intrigued by that oscar isaac is good in this i will say that i think overall the performances are pretty good but in the end i just kind of had a sour taste in my mouth because i was like i don't really like the turn that this took I didn't really like the turn that it took. Stick to the poker, stick to the card counting. That is where it could have been very interesting. I gave it a 74 out of 100, and it comes in at number 6 on my list. Coming in at number 5 is Dear Evan Hansen. This one pains me because I wanted to love this movie so much. And of course, you saw my review. If you listen to my podcast episode, you're a real one. This is by far the most overhated film of the year extremely flawed some very unwelcome writing but the performances from caitlin deaver and ben platt are really good the emotion is there and the music is absolutely awesome and moving the emotion does stick there are themes in here that are important while they don't always land why i do not believe that they are all executed very well i think there is enough emotional value here for it to actually leave a mark I really enjoyed it for that. I respected it for that. But on the other side, again, the writing is extremely flawed. That's the thing I didn't love about it. I think Amy Adams is so out of place in this role. She just is not good. There are things I don't like. It is flawed, but it does have its goods. This is by far the most overhated film of this year. I talked about it more in depth in my review and in my podcast, so go watch or listen. I still gave it a 77 out of 100. I enjoyed it for what it was, and it comes in at number five on my list coming in at number four is worth uh, a surprise I, I saw the trailer i saw the cast i was very intrigued by this one and it turned out to be really emotional and moving and and it came out around 9 11 and it, this is a, this is a story about the aftermath of 9 11 and i think it's it's very interesting it's a very interesting story that i i never knew about i mean i was 
three years old when that happened and I, it's something that that really did intrigue me to learn about and of course you got great performances by michael keaton stanley tucci that that carry this film it's a story that while it's not the most flattering it is for me at least wholeheartedly interesting and i think they did a very great job at explaining what was going on and everything that that was happening i really respected this film i really thought it was very well done it does have its problems again it's a flawed film there is no nowhere near perfect but it conveys the story in an easy understandable way that i respected and ended up enjoying for that i gave it an 82 out of 100 it's got a lot that is really good about it and it comes in at number four on my list coming in at number three a film that i thought honestly i thought would be at the bottom and very pleasantly surprised that it's not and that is cry macho Clint Eastwood is a legend first and foremost. We know this already. This is something that no one needs to understate or, or talk about. He is a living legend in the world of film. I love the direction and the aesthetic of this film. Directed by Clint Eastwood. He stars in it as well. Makes me miss Arizona. I, I, it really does. The, the, it was so warm and rich. And, and the themes that were shown here are very impactful. I really, really enjoyed that about it. And again, it is all vibe. It's a vibe and aesthetic and that comes from the direction. I think what Clint Eastwood was able to do here was very warm and rich, like I have already said. Performances are fine. The story is bland at times. I didn't love all of what they were trying to go for, but it was emotional in the end. I really did like some of the choices that Clint Eastwood and everyone made. It has its pacing issues. It does drag in the, in the second act a lot. It's a fairly long film. But in the end, I felt like I was at home. I felt warmth, and I ended up really enjoying it. I gave it an 83 out of 100. A, a very big, pleasant surprise for me this year. And maybe because of where I'm from, maybe because of that vibe, but I ended up enjoying it, and it comes at number three on my list. Coming in at number two is The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Another based off a true story story that was genuinely interesting. Um... I was thoroughly intrigued throughout thanks to the easy to understand storytelling and direction. With films like this, you need to make the storytelling easy to understand for the viewer. You don't want them to assume they're going to know everything. And they did that very well here. They took us through the story very easily. It's very easy to understand and I really enjoyed that. But by far the best part of this film, Jessica Chastain and Andrew Garfield. And really, Jessica Chastain absolutely fantastic performances and learning the story of how this film got made how this is like a baby to Jessica Chastain how she's wanted to get this made for a long time makes me love it even more because you can really tell that she put her heart and soul not just into the performance but into the film overall this is a very moving one it's very impactful and emotional and it's very very well done go see this if you haven't already I think it's going to get some award buzz I don't think it's going to win anything I think Chastain has the best Chastain has the best chances of being nominated for something of anything here. Maybe costumes and makeup as well. I don't know about anything else, but this is an interesting one. It's a very intriguing story that you all should go check out. It's pretty interesting. I gave it an 86 out of 100, and it is number two on my list. But of course, number one, and like I said in my in last the list last month, I wasn't going to include that one because I did see it in August, but it came out in September, and that is Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. The new hero that the MCU needed is here. Kicks off Phase 4 with a fresh new take at the origin story. Marvel has always been heavily critiqued about having very cookie-cutter origin stories. That's not what this is. This is extremely fresh. This is extremely unique. And, and I'm going to continue to say fresh and unique because this is this is unlike any Marvel film we've ever seen in the MCU. And I, I really, really enjoyed it for that. The action is awesome. The performances are stellar. Simu Liu is absolutely fantastic. He is the embodiment of a Marvel superhero. I'm so excited to see him more in the MCU. I am very, very intrigued and excited to see where Shang-Chi ends up next in the MCU. post credit scenes say that he is fully integrated into the universe. I'm very excited. This is by far one of my favorite films of not just the the year, but of the MCU. It's in my top 10, and it really was impactful. I think it's one of the best origin stories of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it really did impact me in a way 
that I did not expect. This one is a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Go see it if you haven't already. It's breaking uh, pandemic era records, which is so good to see because it really is that good of a film. I gave it a 95 out of 100, and it is my favorite film that I watched that came out in September. I want you guys to go down below in the comments. Let me know. What is your favorite film that came out in September? A lot of you may say Shang-Chi. Some of you may say another film. I don't know. Let me know down below. Let's talk about it down below in the comments. Again, I want to thank you all so much for 800 subscribers. We are back doing content. Again, it's not going to be as frequent as it used to be, but I'm still pumping out content for you guys. Subscribe if you have not already. We're trying to get to 1,000. I appreciate every single one of you that already has subscribed. Like the video. Do all of that stuff. Have a good rest of your day, and we'll see you in the next video.